Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. 79 days, 79 days until kickoff of the NFL season. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to get there. Yesterday was a, a funny day, to say the least. Um, it was nice to see that other teams have issues beyond the Cowboys. You know, if you're the New York Jets, you've got for mandatory minicamp, you've got Aaron Rodgers just not showing up, just not showing up. If you're San Francisco, you got contract issues with Brandon Ayuk. If you're the Eagles, you've got a quarterback that you're questioning whether or not he is the guy that you need after you paid him $51 million a year. You got a coach who looks like Dracula, and seemingly nobody knows what he does. And an ownership that's kind of mad at everybody. So it's kind of nice to see that whole dynamic and stuff just going around as we are Cowboy fans trying to get back to getting a ring. So this is one of those things that, you know, I get, listen, I'm a YouTuber, okay? I do the best I can, okay? I do not have a whole paid staff of people that do all the research for me that literally hand me a script or a teleprompter that I read the news on. I'm not given basically a script that says you're on this side of the argument versus that guy. And here's your talking points. When you do YouTube, shout out to all of my brethren out there, all of Cowboys Mafia, even the ones that aren't, you know, the Philly 500s, the bad dogs and, and the cop pizzles and <clears throat> everything <coughs> out there. You are everything. You're the guy that runs the board. You're the guy that does the lighting. You're the guy that has to run the computers and everything else. You are the research department. In fact, I got up, I get up and I'm here sitting here for an hour or two before I even do my morning video. Because I'm digesting all of the news that's out there and trying to put stuff together. You know, because that's what you do as a YouTuber. I don't have a group of people that are doing all that work for me. So I make mistakes. And I have no problem making, you know, let you know. Listen, I'm a YouTuber. I am a sole proprietor here. It's just me. Okay? But I don't get it when you have NFL people who work and have people that are going through there and then they make mistakes on a consistent basis because one of the things i keep hearing is dak prescott's hit of 60 million dollars this year first of all it was never 60 million dollars it was 59 million before they restructured that four million dollars it's 55 that's one of those things and i was listening to Conway Calhoun cowherd with um, Albert Breer and I'm sitting here for a second listening to him talk and I hope this doesn't get copyrighted because I'm going to play this but I'm like what are you talking about because they're talking about Dak Prescott's contract and how the Cowboys missed the opportunity and if Trevor Lawrence's deal affected what Dak Prescott had and going through who should get paid first and people are arguing that Micah Parsons should get paid first even though the Cowboys literally own his rights for years to come and there's nothing he can do about it. And he says the franchise tag would be about $80 million. It's like, wait a minute. You, you know, I know you weren't talking about the franchise tag for CD lamb. You do know that Dak Prescott has no trade clause and no franchise tag in his current contract. They can't do that. So let me play this. Because I'm sitting here, first I was like, $80 million? How do we get to $80 million next year for a franchise tag? Isn't the average salary of the top five? Be it he was one year, which means you get the 12% increase, 
But you can't franchise tag him. So what the hell are you talking about? Now they've got a guy who wants to get paid early. How do they handle that? How does that resonate in the locker room? That part's interesting. And then the DAC thing, of course, you have to be concerned with after what Trevor Lawrence got, you know, what damage waiting could do, you know, from here on out. If you're waiting and, and Jordan Love and Tua get paid, does that raise the stakes on what you got to pay DAC? It certainly could. And, and the franchise tag after the year, and I'm sure you know this, Colin, would cost them over $80 million. Yeah. So that's not going to happen either. I want to circle back to the Jets. Um, you know, I'm sorry. So wait a minute. The fr- wait a minute. You don't know that you can't franchise tag Dak Prescott? You don't know this? You're supposed to be an insider that knows. You're not a sole proprietor. You are not like a LLC. <clears throat> you are supposed to be a guy that know. You, you, you guys don't know that he can't. Be- wait, let's do it again. Take care of them. What does that mean to me? And that's why the Micah thing's so interesting because he's only been in the league three years. CD, they've made late, right? So how do you handle the Micah Parsons thing versus how you've handled Lamb now, Prescott now, Prescott before, Lawrence before, Zach Martin before, even like a Des Bryant if you want to go further back? It's just really interesting because the Cowboys have been burned so many times by waiting on these things. And now they've got a guy who wants to get paid early. How do they handle that? How does that resonate in the locker room? That part's interesting. And then the DAC thing, of course, you have to be concerned with after what Trevor Lawrence got, you know, what damage waiting could do, you know, from here on out. If you're waiting and and Jordan Love and Tua get paid, does that raise the stakes on what you got to pay DAC? It certainly could. And and the franchise tag after the year, and I'm sure you know this, Colin, would cost them over $80 million. So that's not going to happen either. I want to circle back to the Jets. Eighty million dollars. The franchise. What, what, what are you guys talking about? You guys are supposed to be the know-it-all. Eighty million dollars to franchise tag. You can't franchise tag them, people. You can't franchise tag them. But <clears throat> this is the silly season. We don't have anything like practice to talk about or anything like that. It's silly season. Now there is T E U. Tight end university where Dak Prescott shows up. Now, of course, we have the trolls out there that are saying, Oh my God, Dak Prescott is wearing a New York Yankees shirt. He wants to be a giant. This is my quarterback right here. Mind you, there's not an ounce of fat on him. Look, look at it. That's my quarterback. That's my teammate. And if you say anything about him, it's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. He looks like he is in... Fan, look at that. He is in fantastic shape. He is ready to go. Now, I'm going to be the one that's going to say, I think the Cowboys have lost leverage. The Cowboys have lost leverage because Trey Lance, you know, for those out there that said the Cowboys signed Trey Lance to be the guy to put pressure on Dak Prescott. There's nobody out there talking about Trey Lance advancing past Dak Prescott. There's nobody out there saying that, you know, like Kenny Pickett is playing better than Jalen Hurts. Unfortunately, and, and you know, I, I've seen the videos out there of him working out, and everybody's like, oh, man, you know, he's got so much talent. He's great. You know, that, that, okay. I, I hear everybody here, all the, the LLCs and all the sole proprietors out there that are on that whole bandwagon. But I'm going to listen to one of the old guard guys, Brian Brodus. When you're out there, the training camp practices happen fast. You mean yeah. they are they're they're moving the speed. You know, you get guys that are desperate to make jobs or to get jobs, and so you're getting guys that are playing at a very high level and playing really quick. Trey Lance has got to play quicker mentally. He has got to play quicker. There's been times where I feel like that he's a little late holding the ball. I don't know if he's trying to read everything too precisely and just not react. 
but you will get a clear picture of him at training camp practices, especially with this secondary, and you will get a clear picture of him when you get to these preseason games, namely the Rams game, namely the Raiders game, you know, and then you finish up with the Chargers. He is going to have opportunities uh, to to uh, to win this number two job. There's been some really good, and there's been some some times where he needs to be uh, a little. Okay. Now, that's Brian Brodus. Now, Brian's been a scout forever. That's a guy that knows. That's a guy who's an insider and, of course, knows everybody that's there. If your idea is we can oh, trade Dak, which is another one of those things that people say that don't understand there's a no trade clause, cut Dak. It just, it, the Trey Lance era, it's, it's Trey Lance season. Doesn't sound like he's anywhere close to being the guy to take off, take the team on. Now here's going to be the problem for the Cowboys. You know, sorry guys, you can, you can call me an idiot if you want. You know, with Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys are going to win some games. The only season that the Cowboys in the time that he's been here, haven't had a winning season was when he got hurt. This isn't the eight and eight Dallas Cowboys with Tony Romo. We pretty much almost every year are playoffs or pretty damn close. We did have that one year was nine and seven that, you know, we were close. It was still a winning record. We didn't make the playoffs in 2017. But you know you're going to win games. And if your idea is, well, you know, we're just going to go through the season and blow it up, you really will be blowing it up because you don't have a plan B. It's not sounding like Trey Lance is a plan B that you can say, Dak, we're going to let you go. See, what you have to understand is when teams have let go of Peyton Manning, they had an Andrew Luck that they already drafted. When they let go of, uh, ah, man, what's his name? Played with Arizona, um, Hall of Famer. The Jets had uh, Eli Manning when they let go of, uh, God, I can't think of his name. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. But understand, you don't go ahead and and just say, we're going to start over and have no other guy in the mix. When they let go of Eli Manning, they had Daniel Jones and thought Danny Dimes is going to be it. Well, it turns out it was wrong. But they knew that we have something else in here to start with. Right now, you don't have that. And here's going to be the problem of, if you got Dak Prescott right now, You're probably going to have a winning season. You'll probably be a playoff team, which means you're probably going to be drafting in the 20s. If you're drafting in the 20s and you're saying, we need to get that first round quarterback and gamble and say, that's going to be our future, you got to get up there. And if you're talking about being in the 20s to get to the top five, you're talking about three, maybe four number ones to get there. And the Cowboys don't want to be irrelevant for a couple of years and start over. Their fix has always been, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, continue to keep reloading. And so you could let Dak walk and say, we're not going to pay him $60 million, but here's the problem. Right now, Kirk Cousins deal at 45, as old as he is. Sounds like a bargain. So you're going to turn around and say, well, we'll get a veteran quarterback. Well, Daniel Jones may be available. Mac Jones may be available. And you can put these people and bring them in, but you might still have to pay them like 40 plus million dollars for a guy that you know you got no chance with. So you have to look at this from a standpoint and say, come on, what's the real deal here? Dak Prescott has gained more leverage because Trey Lance at the moment doesn't look viable. Now, that's not to say come training camp, you know, in preseason that he doesn't start looking a little bit better and give you hope. But right now when we're talking about, you know, helmets and T-shirts and no rush coming at you, you're slow to deliver the ball now. That doesn't bear good for becoming the next great Dallas Cowboy quarterback. 
Interesting thing. I saw this this morning because, like I said, I go through and do research and things. Chat Sports. I didn't realize that Chat Sports. I thought Chat Sports was just Dallas Cowboys. But there's a Chat Sports Ravens. And they're promoting Trey Lance. And maybe I'm going to have to start calling him Trade Lance to go to the Baltimore Ravens. Let's listen in. Ravens Rundown by Chat Sports. Coming up on today's show, we'll talk about whether or not the Baltimore Ravens should be in the trade market for Dallas Cowboys quarterback Trey Lance. This guy it's right silly here. season. We will also get you the latest report out of ESPN on Nate Wiggins and how he impressed over the course of the offseason, most recently, and mandatory minicamp. All that and more coming up on this edition of the program. I am merely Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. And in case you missed it, <coughs> Fox Sports NFL analyst Mark Schlereth, over the weekend, he declared the Ravens-Steelers rivalry to be the best rivalry in the National Football League. Do you agree? If you do, like today's video. Ravens if not, Steelers? comment and tell me why you don't believe it is. Let us know, and we'll get started with I'm beginning to show. say, actually, Cowboys and Eagles Lance are getting be on there, his too. way to Baltimore. CBS Sports is suggesting that the Ravens are the top destination to land the former first-round draft pick out of North Dakota State. As uh, In case you need a little refresher, Lance was traded to Dallas uh, during the preseason last year and ultimately did not see the field at all. There was a thought that maybe he could be the replacement for Dak Prescott. That seems highly unlikely at this point in time. So what about him coming to Baltimore to back up Lamar Jackson. Here's more from Cody Benjamin of CBS. Johnson deserves props for his stamina, referring to Josh Johnson, entering year 17 with his record 14th different team. But at 38, with only two passes thrown in the last two seasons, he's not exactly a high upside insurance plan for the reigning NFL MVP in Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. Lance, meanwhile, is a relatively unknown due to his injury-stricken start with the San Francisco 49ers, but his youth, 24, and rushing ability are pluses. And the Dallas Cowboys have yet to use him behind Dak Prescott, like, likely lowering his price tag. Now, I'll say this. Is it going to happen? Probably not, if we're going to be frank. With the recent draft pick of Devin Leary, I would be surprised if the Ravens did add another quarterback at this point. But, when you look a little further into this quarterback room with the Baltimore Ravens, it leaves a lot to be desired at this point. Yes, you have the MVP in Lamar Josh Jackson, Johnson. but Josh Johnson is He's been just around kinda, the town. Nah, right? Yes. Devin Leary, I wasn't a fan of the draft pick to begin with. More on that here in just a second. Trey Lance would fit what the Ravens are looking for in their system when – you talk about a guy that uh, is mobile, that is still very young, unproven at this point in time. To me, mm -hmm. he kind of fits more so than what we've seen from Johnson and Larry at this point in time. And to give more context, SI Raven Country also talked about the possibility, saying the following. Still, Lance is mobile enough to work in the Ravens' offense. So maybe fit well as a backup. Dallas only had to give up a fourth-round pick to acquire him last offseason, and his price tag will likely go down after a season on the bench. Baltimore could get him for practically nothing if there is indeed interest, and we really mean that. Basically mm -hmm. nothing. You're talking about what, a sixth or seventh-round pick at this point to get the former no. number three overall pick? No. Remember the Niners at one point in time gave up three number ones. No. So... There's something there. There's some potential. I'm willing to take uh, a look at the The Cowboys aren't walking away with the number seven. When We're I'm not, giving no. up basically nothing at this point in time. Sorry. To me, I don't see the risk involved. Here of course there's if not. If I'm the Baltimore Ravens and the insurance policy. What if something happens to Lamar Jackson? We'll get into that here in just a second. So let's ask you if you're Eric DaCosta, would you trade for Trey Lance? It's our pin comment today. Sorry, the Cowboys aren't going to trade Trey Lance for a seventh-round pick. Okay? I'm sorry. 
You're just not. Not after what they gave up on him. No. But that would be... The, the thing is, right now with Trey Lance, he is an insurance policy for the Cowboys. And what you really try to do, and this is where... I, you know, for Brian Brodus going out there and saying, oh, he's not looking good. What you really want to do is you want to talk about how he is, you know, looking so good that maybe he could challenge Dak Prescott in the same way that Jimmy Johnson did with Steve Walsh, knowing that he had Troy Aikman. Didn't even let Troy Aikman know that here's the thing. We're trying to get some compensation for Walsh. And this is one of those things that seems like the Cowboys always mess up on. You know, when, when a team says, well, you know, we're going to cut them if we can't trade them and we're taking offers. If you're letting people know you're going to cut them, why would I offer a trade for it? But then again, I am an LLC, I'm sorry, or sole proprietor, YouTuber. What do I know? Trey Lance for a seventh round pick. Okay. Have a great day, good people, and uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And we'll end with this. Why? Doesn't it seem that the Eagles took a shit on Jalen? And the owner and GM did. The owner, the GM, and the head coach took a shit on their quarterback. Why?